My sisters and brothers, let us begin as we begin all things. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. As we gather here today, we do so to celebrate the seventh Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first take a moment to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both in word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our response, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. 
If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own bruises. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, or the present or the future. All belong to you and you to Christ and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Whoever keeps the word of Christ, the love of God is truly perfected in them. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to the one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, Go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For God makes the sun rise on the good and the bad and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your neighbors only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was a, a young priest, I read a story about uh, a monastery that had been a really great monastery in its heyday. It was a place that uh, was filled with the, with the monks and the sisters, the religious, a community of, of Christians who really treated one another with a sense of love and respect and were all working in the, for a common goal, all looking to uh, build up the kingdom of God and to spread the good news of the gospel. And this monastery uh, had been very successful. It was an instrumental part of the town and the the, the uh, monks there living there had the tremendous support of this village. And unfortunately, uh, over time, the monastery really fell from, it fell uh, into disrepair and the numbers began to shrink and uh, it was just a really a, a very, very desperate situation. The, the village no longer cared about uh, those who were living in the monastery and uh, it was as if all hope had been lost. And so the, the abbot, the person in charge of the monks, had decided that it was time for them to go and seek spiritual wisdom. And so uh, a small group was sent out to a mountaintop to talk to a wise man and say, why is our monastery fallen into such disrepair? Why have we shrunk in size? Why doesn't anybody 
uh, care about that anymore. And the wise man had told the group sent by the abbot, saying, I cannot answer that question for you, but I do have good news for you. And that is that the Lord Jesus Christ will be visiting the monastery, but he will be in disguise. And so make sure uh, that he is welcome, this visitor is welcomed in with a sense of great enthusiasm. And so uh, the monks returned to the monastery, reported the news to the abbot, and they began to treat every single visitor as if they were Jesus Christ. Uh, in disguise. They made sure that Jesus wasn't going to catch them arguing with one another. He was going to make sure that Jesus wasn't going to catch them filled with pettiness or jealousy and they were going to really treat one another with a sense of love and respect. They didn't want uh, Jesus to come in and to see them behaving uh, poorly. And so their whole attitude completely changed, not knowing which of the visitors to the monastery was Jesus in in disguise. And it was shortly after that that the monastery once again came back to life and it began to be filled with new members and began to be uh, an important part of the community once again. And the whole moral of the story was that the monks believing that the presence of Jesus was among them, they began to treat one another the way that God wants us to treat others. And that was something that was very appealing and very attractive. That's why they were able to get new members. And because the people living in the village began to see the brothers uh, treating each other with a sense of love and respect, then once again had admiration for them and wanted to support the good work. And that really is a very valuable lesson for all of us to learn. If we're going to be uh, a community that people want to be a part of, if we want to be a community or an organization in the community that people want to support, it's going to be because of the way that we treat one another. If the outside world sees us as only being focused upon ourselves, or if the outside world sees us behaving in an unchristian manner and filled with pettiness and jealousies and uh, wanting to be in selfish behavior, who's going to want to be a part of, of our own parish community? And so that really is the challenge for us. We know that Jesus isn't going to come in, di- in uh, disguise, but we know that God is always with us. And shouldn't that be reflected in our interactions? Shouldn't that be reflected and our sense of selflessness, and then shouldn't it be reflected in our desire to bring about a sense of, of good into the world? We're very fortunate to be a part of a wonderful community, and wonderful things are taking place here at Christ the King, and we're filled with, with wonderful individuals. But I think uh, this whole Renew My Church process is a reminder to us that we have to show our best face outward not out of a sense of arrogance or look at how wonderful we are, but rather this is what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, that we treat one another with love and respect and we have compassion uh, for those who are in need. We have to do a better job of kind of touting uh, just how wonderful we are because that's the way for us uh, to be inviting to others. Nobody wants to be a part of an organization uh, that is dying or that's filled with, with anxiety. We have enough pain and suffering in this world. We're not looking for more. I don't want to be a part of an organization uh, that's filled with strife. I want to be a part of an organization that is filled with vibrancy and life. And we know that our parish community is. And we have to continue doing the good things that we are doing. And I think all of us individually have to look at ourselves and say, How can I be more peaceful in my heart and therefore more attractive uh, to others? How can can I really build up the kingdom of God here in such a way that others would want the same sense of joy in their hearts that we have in ours? And so as we gather here on this seventh Sunday of Ordinary Time, as we begin to prepare ourselves to celebrate the season of Lent, I invite us to look into our lives and to see where are those changes that we have to make. 
What are those grievances that we need to let go of? How can we really allow God to penetrate our hearts in such a way that we become beacons of hope for all those who are suffering? And so, my sisters and brothers, now as a family of faith, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and this kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I now invite us to bring forth our prayers and petitions. For the church, may Christ continue to bless her with grace and wisdom in bringing his love to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, may the Lord assist them in working to promote peace among all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, May the Holy Spirit continue to empower us in saying yes to what God asks of us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may the Lord's hand be upon them and bring them healing and wholeness, especially for Leo Kumpian, Kathy McLaughlin, Dan Lynch, Augustav, Judy Beamster, Yvonne Music. Judah Hartle, Judy Rahm, Jordan Schwarzina, Carol Cunningham, Dolores Salas, Kate Cleary, Max Hole, Teo Dominguez, Carolyn Schwarzina, George Hoagland, Roger Cassis Sr., Mike Heaney, John Hearn Dobler, Mike Engel, Eva Kelly, Dick Murphy, Mackenzie Pollock, Caitlin Tice, Ruben Jarragay, Matt Taylor, Matt Taylor, John J. Hiller Jr., Gwen Henderson, and Megan Rhodes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be welcomed into the eternal joy of God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we make now, especially for Mary Duty, Helen Torpy and Colleen Nix, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear the prayers of your faithful, wherever they may be. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters and brothers, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of, our, of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God descend his blessing upon us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace and love to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.